and welcome to another interesting class with Mrs. Tessie. We will be learning about the structure of an atom. So we've learned about elements and we know that elements are made up of atoms. So in this class we'll learn about the structure of an atom. By structure we mean how is an atom built? What makes up an atom? The components of an atom. So in this class we'll discuss the meaning of elements by way of a review. We'll learn the meaning of an atom, definition, and then we we'll now look at the structure of an atom. In looking at the structure of an atom, of course, we're we'll looking at the diagrammatic representation of an atom. So the class promises to be interesting. I hope you are ready. Sit back, get your writing materials, and take down some important notes. It is worthy to note that atoms are so small that they cannot be further broken down. You know, when something is so small, has mommy ever shared a piece of meat or an apple with, between you and your siblings? She cuts it such that she can no longer cut it. At that point, you can describe such an apple to be an atom. They are so small that they cannot be further broken down. Okay, so they are the smallest particle of elements. So they are the smallest indivisible particles of elements and they can represent the elements in a chemical reaction, any chemical reaction. They are made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. These are the particles that make up an atom and they can combine with other atoms of the same or different elements. When they combine with atoms of the same elements, they form molecules, but when they combine with atoms of different elements, they form compounds. So in looking at the structure of an atom, we notice that atoms are mostly round. Yes, they are mostly represented as round. Okay, and they are made up of three particles, two on the inside of the atom and one on the outside of the nucleus of the atom. And finally, we said atoms can react with other atoms, whether they are the same elements or different elements, but they can react with other atoms. Now looking here is the structure of an atom. Inside, you see that sky blue color, that center circle, that is called the nucleus of the atom. And inside there you can see the lemon color neutrons and the blue, dark blue color protons. So the protons and the neutrons are contained in the nucleus of an atom. Protons are positively charged particles while neutrons have no charge. Then electrons are found outside the nucleus of the outside the um, nucleus and they are negatively charged. Now, when atoms of the same elements, for example, let's use an element hydrogen, an atom of hydrogen reacts with another atom of the same hydrogen. What we get is a molecule. But when atoms of different elements now react, then what we get is a compound. So when you hear compounds, it's not the compound that you sweep, you're compounding, your compound, you say my compound is big. No. In chemistry, compounds are made from atoms that react, atoms that react from different elements. And examples we have here, we have water, your common salt, the salt you use in cooking, vinegar, hydrochloric acid, all these are examples of compounds. Interesting, huh? Right? So these compounds. We have said there are atoms that react from different elements. Combination of atoms of different elements is like if, how to how do I put it? Like in a marriage setting, a brother marries a sister from another family, we form a compound, another family. But if a brother marries a sister from the same family, then we form a molecule. So an example of a compound here is hydrochloric acid formed from hydrogen and chlorine. But in the molecule, like I said earlier, I said the atoms that react here or combine here are from the same elements. You can liken it to say they are from the same parents when a brother marries a sister, although it's an abomination in this part of the world. But such a relationship, for instance, will give birth to molecules. An example is the hydrogen molecule. You can see here we have two hydrogen, that's why we have H2. So more examples, we have hydrogen molecules, we have oxygen molecule, carbon molecule, and the methane 
molecule, right? So these are examples, even carbon dioxide gas is a molecule. So these are some examples of molecules. Remember I said molecules are formed when atoms of the same elements combine or react to form a new substance. Whereas compounds are formed when atoms of different elements react or combine to form a new substance. So we have, I have an homework for you for the next class. It's easy, make a list of some elements. State the number of proton, neutron, and electron in each element. For example, you choose phosphorus. We know that phosphorus is atomic number 15. So it means that phosphorus, we have 15 number of protons, 15 number of neutrons, and 15 number of electrons. That's easy and short, right? So you can do that for the other 10 elements that you're going to be doing. So thank you so much for listening. I had fun teaching you and I hope you enjoyed learning from me. Until our next class, is Mrs. Tessie saying goodbye and stay safe. Thank you.